different kind of weapons. They are a different kind of weapon. He said these weapons are potent through God to pull down strongholds. Tell anybody to pull down strongholds. Every broke person, spiritually, physically, mentally, sexual or otherwise, are broke because of the strongholds in their mind. Strongholds are not some physical pillars. They are mental holds. Tell anybody mental holds. There is something in your mind that you must deal with. Please go to the next verse. Let me say this. There is a common quote out there, which is what actually this verse is emphasizing, that the battlefield of life is in the mind. Tell anybody the battlefield is in the mind. You win in life based on whether you have won in your mind. It is those who win in their minds who win outside their minds. Are you here? You've gone home. Amen. It is those who win where? Who win where? Hallelujah. It is those who have won in their minds who would win outside of it. You are either a winner or a loser, in quote, based on how you think. For as he thinketh, so is he. If he thinks he's a winner, he keeps on fighting. Are you in this church? If he thinks he's a winner, he'll keep on winning. If she thinks she has failed, she'll pack her bags and go home. You know what the word is saying? The weapons of our warfare are not carnal. Though I walk in the flesh, I do not war after the flesh. How do I war? I war using spiritual weapons on my mind. Tell anybody, I war. Using spiritual weapons on my mind. Say, I war using spiritual weapons on my mind. So, what a Christian must do is shine the ray of God's word. Consistently refuse to be conformed to this word. But be transformed by constantly exposing his or her mind to heavenly and godly truths. Things that have the ability to make you thick. Am I talking to someone? The Bible says strong food is for the mature. Who by reason of use have their senses exercised. They have their senses exercised unto godliness. So, so, so they've trained their minds by continuous exposure. So, so what you do is you get the spiritual weapons, and you put it on your mind. And I think this is where many believers or Christians or church folks mix, mi, mi, uh, miss it. A lot of God's folks and church people don't use their mind. You see where I'm coming? Bringing me back to thinking. A lot of folks don't use their mind. They think just by being a Christian and being in church and, you know, oh, I'm spiritual, 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 spiritual. Spirituality huh, has to express itself through your mentality. Tell anybody, your spirituality has to express itself through your mentality. Who? Until your spirituality affects your mentality, you would remain at the same place. No man can advance beyond his mindset. No one can advance beyond the level and the state of his mind. So it's in the mind. Hallelujah. He said, for those who walk after the flesh, they have their minds set on the things of the flesh. Those who walk after the spirit have their mind set on the things of the spirit. Romans, the 8th chapter. So it's about your mindset. If until spirituality has its full expression through your mind, you remain at the same place. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. I think you're waiting for the 32 point before you begin to write. And you're missing out on the main dish. The 32 points are just... Amen. The third meal. Amen. We're finishing. That's it. The 32 point. Hallelujah. In verse 5, he said, casting down imagination. Say, we're casting down imaginations. Here are imaginations. You know, 
he's talking about, he said, he said, although we walk in the flesh, but I do not war in the flesh. Rather, I cast imagination. So the problem is coming from your imagination. Tell me about it's from your imagination. Yeah. So a broke brother is broke because of his broke imagination. Amen. A broke sister, she's broke because of her broke imagination. So you can have a fat account right now. And if your imagination remains broke, you go eventually become broke. Every man gravitates towards his mind. That's why people win lottery. Somebody won a million dollar lottery. And you come back a year later and he's broke back again. He lost everything because he never got the mindset he needed to keep the money. I don't know if you're, if, if you're getting me. It's in the mind. Ah. And you should see Christians today attacking things like psychology. Christians, when it comes to psychology, what is that? That's psychology. Let's, let's talk. I'm come, I'm, when I show you the two points, you understand why Christians are where they are. And yet, it starts from your mind. Psychology talks about your mind, how you think. How do you think? For as he thinketh, so is he. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Who? He says, casting down imagination. So I use the spiritual weapons to cast down imaginations in my mind. Tell anybody it's in the imagination. Say it in your imagination. Say it in your imagination. Ah, yeah. Now you think when you see a brother or a sister physically sick, huh? you will think the problem is in the physical. But God is saying it starts from the mind. I wish you were here. Are you here? His sickness is not because of something that happened in the flesh. It is because of a way he thinks or she thinks. He said, for though, amen, for though we live in the flesh or we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. So if in the flesh I'm sick, if I'm going to deal with the sickness, he said, I got to cast down imaginations. There are some imaginations that I don't know about that are deep rooted in my mind that I need to deal with. Hallelujah. Amen. It says, um, casting down imaginations, casting down every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. In the mind, tell anybody in the mind. Say it's in your mind. Say it's in the mind. You know, there she is, you know, like, oh, he is. Eh, ah, ah, don't move it, don't move it, don't move it. If you move it, I'll just die. <laughs> and when you, at that moment, you would think the problem is what's happening in the leg. It has nothing to do with what's happening in the leg. It has absolutely, and we've pro- you know, science, even science has proven it again and again. That's why sometimes somebody who was not sick, you know, they come to the hospital and you tell them, you know, sorry, we, we are sorry to give you this bad news. Um, the, the, the report shows that you are HIV positive. All the tongues vanish. He goes. All the symptoms start manifesting. I wish you could understand me. Your problem is not what is happening outside. It is what is sitting inside your mind. And meanwhile, that was not his report. There was a mistake. He was giving a wrong medical report. But right now, his hair is already falling off. walking. He's counting his days now. He said, I will die any moment. Because of something that entered his mind. Folks, listen to this. There is something in your mind that has kept you where you are. Are you with me? Listen. How do you get such a person to be fine? The doctor come again. The same doctor say like, "Hey, we are sorry. Who said you had HIV? Where? From where? 
the report doesn't show you have HIV. Uh -uh. So how come I'm having these, these symptoms? Why is it then that my hair is falling? Because he has no clue about that dimension. There is a dimension. Amen. Amen. For as he thinketh, so is he. Tell your neighbor, as you think, so are you. How are you thinking now? Amen. Hallelujah. Tell me I'm too blessed to be cursed. Say, I'm too blessed to be cursed. Amen. Too blessed to be cursed. I got to rush you because of time. He said, I'm bringing into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ. Tell me about bring it, bring it to captivity. Are you seeing now? God is telling you how. Listen, listen good. The problem is the thoughts that comes into your head. The problem is the, imagina is the imagination. Then it says, it says, and everything that exalts itself. So if God has said you cannot be sick or will not be sick, you know what's going to happen? You're going to have thoughts. You're going to have imaginations. You're going to have folks telling you. You're going to have feelings that show you that you can be sick. But you know what the Bible says? It says right there in your mind is where you do the battle. You fight the fight. Tell anybody, we we'll fight the fight. There's a story of a man who had an accident in an aer aeroplane. He was the only survivor. And he was badly messed up. Messed up full time. Bones, organs, everything. They gave him no chance of survival. Couldn't even speak. He's there in the hospital and they're waiting for him to die. But he said to them, I can't remember how he communicated. I'm not sure now. But he said to them, I'm going to walk out of this hospital before my next birthday. I'm going to walk out. Walk out. He's paralyzed. I'm going to walk out before my next birthday. And doctors kept seeing him defile all odds. Everything kept turning around. Everything kept turning around. In fact, the day of his birthday, he was being carried on a wheelchair. He couldn't walk yet. He said, carry me. They carried him to the door. The door of the hospital. Got up from wheelchair and walked his way out and walked home. For as he thinketh, so is he. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I hope you are. Hallelujah. You know the Bible says, it says, it says, I, I gotta be a, it says, it says you gotta be a police officer. You gotta be a vigilante. It says you bring into captivity every thought. Every thought, any thought that is against God's word, any thought that is, a, that is in dis disobedience to God, he said you bring it to arrest. Amen. God said you're going to be rich, and suddenly you're hearing voices or feeling like you're going to stay broke. He said you bring it to arrest. Tell anybody you bring it to arrest. Yeah. You take responsibility. Verse 6, verse 6. Who? Time, time, time. Can't wait to get into the 32. He said, and having in a readiness to revenge all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. He says, you, there's got to be something in you ready to revenge every disobedience. Whenever you feel your mind drifting away, there's got to be something in you ready to what? Revenge all disobedience. You are ready to punish every time some other thing or contrary voice tries to raise itself against, against what God has said about your life. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 32 broke mindsets you must change. 32 broke mindsets you must change. Number one, please remember. <laughs> Fast you think it, so easy. Guard your heart diligently, for out of it are the issues of life. Casting down every imagination and every high thing that exalts itself above the knowledge of God. Bringing every thought into obedience. There are some thought patterns that are common to broke folks. Amen. 
identifying them and changing them will put you or set you on a course towards consistent wealth and riches. Number one, procrastination. Number one? Amen. <laughs> Procrastination. You know, Christian folks are... <laughs> ah, hallelujah. You know, a lot of church folks, we, 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 we are there fighting and battling the devil morning, afternoon, evening, night. We think the devil is our problem everything and every time. And after you've done casting out the devil and doing deliverance today to tomorrow and everybody are falling on the ground and everybody is rolling on the ground, you are tired, you are burnt out, the person you delivered is burnt out and now you are all free. One year later, everybody is still broke. Amen. Say, Pastor, please lay hands on me. Deliver me from this rebellion and this stubbornness against my husband. And the man of God comes. Come on! And she falls, eh, eh, eh. thank you, Jesus, I'm free. Thank you, Jesus, I'm free. Thank you, Lord. Oh. Rebellion gone. Everything gone. Tomorrow, they are still divorcing. Because the problem was never the rebellion. The problem was never... The thing she thought it was. There is a way she thinks. There is a way he thinks, which if they don't change, the result will still happen. Am I not know somebody? So please, understand this. There are some better deliverances the church must be doing. Are you understanding me? Sometimes the problem is not the, the demon of uh, <laughs> Lucifer, what's the other one they call? All the many demons, you can know some of the powerful names um, they show on TV these days. Uh, you know, <laughs> some crazy names. The simple names you need to know, procrastination. <laughs> Do you understand that? Don't, <laughs> don't look too far. Yeah, sto- y- amen. That's the first thing you must focus on dealing with. Don't look too far. You need to deal with this thing that makes you procrastinate. I'm going to know somebody. I'll do it later. And then one day will become one week. One week will become one month. One month will become one year. And it's not done. And you wonder why things are not changing. And you go there again and you stay. Like Pastor Gibson said the other time, you know. <laughs> God help his people. You know. I mean, I think some of you saw online this common one where they were showing how rich people pray and how <laughs> broke people pray. You know. And it's a- the actual truth. There is something in the mindset. I'm telling you the truth. I'm telling you the truth. There is no, you see, if you are truthful, if there's any truth in you, you know this is the truth. You think it is, ah, yeah. Jesus Christ says, he said, by their many shoutings, they think they shall be heard. Yeah, you, <laughs> And you see, prayer point. Father, use me till I'm useless. <laughs> use me, use me, use me, use me, useless me. Useless me now. Father, useless, finish. And while you are doing all that, God is saying something you need to do. And you are saying, I'll do it later. God is saying, no, do it now. You are saying, I'll do it later. There's something about the rich. They are always quick. It, tells, it gets an idea. He's already working on it tomorrow. It gets a business plan. He's working on it already this night. It will keep him awake. He's not thinking, oh, okay, maybe 2019, 2019. 20, in fact, let me wait till after croak.
They act. Am I talking somebody? They act. There are some of you here. By now you should have had five or six songs. You kept saying summer. There is a thing in winter that chokes voices. <laughs> if you sing in winter, there will be a problem. <laughs> the song will not sound nice. Number two, excuses. Always coming up with one excuse or the other. You just keep coming up with one excuse or the other. Everything. So you, are, you are ingenious, creative in excuses. Now, you would think a brother going to, who was going to church, huh? and in the process, or a sister, for some strange reason, the shoe just spoiled. Now she can't go to church anymore. You would think the reason her shoe spoiled is the reason why she didn't come to church. No. She didn't co- the shoe spoiled because of what she was thinking. She did want to go to church. And so, you see, if you understand the power of the mind, it's a creative center. It will create for you what you want. So the mind, you didn't want to go to church, so it will create an event for some strange reason. Of all days, that's the day your clothes will just hold, hold the door and it will tear. And now it finally happens. You see, you see, maybe this is a sign. Maybe this is a sign. Maybe this is a sign. When your mind is made of, nothing stops you. No excuse. I'm going. I, I am going where I'm going. Am I talking to somebody in this church? Now, such a one or who it has happened to, if you ask him or her, she will tell you, you know, like, um, no, it can't be. I was not thinking about it because she doesn't know she was thinking. A lot of folks can't identify their thinking or their minds. They don't know their thoughts. They can't trace it back. Where did this thing start from? For as she thinks, so is she. I'm going to know somebody. What are you thinking now? Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Who? I'm thinking for you that you would definitely marry the right person. Amen. Amen. But even more importantly that you will be the right person. You know sometimes it's not about marrying the right person. You may be the wrong person. So if you are the wrong person and you marry the right person, you think the person is your problem. No, no, you are the problem. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Tell them about no excuses. No excuses. Jack Ma puts it like this. He says, you tell a, a poor man to invest, he doesn't want. He tell you, I don't have anything to, anything to invest with. You give him, you tell him where to invest. He finds another excuse. You give him the resources needed to invest. He finds a need he needs to set to first. There's always an excuse. Excuses just jumping up here and there. Excuses are children. Aya. Amen. Some people are billionaires in excuses. Amen. You may not understand the depth of what I just said. Some people are very rich in excuses. They can manufacture or create excuses on the spot. On the spot. They don't need to think too far. So are you going to be there? Ah, no, 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 I can't make it. Um, I, there's so much. Um, there's this, uh, this thing, you know. Uh, yeah, yeah, sure. Yeah, so, okay. It's okay, it's okay. Even if I... You know, <laughs> on the spot. When you are broke in excuses, you will be rich financially. Yeah. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yeah. When, you, when you commit to being broke in excuses, you will be rich financially. Amen. Amen. Excusionia. Amen. Don't be an excusionia. Are you in this church? Yeah. Praise the Lord. Number three, because of time. Fear, 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 fear. Fear is a common mindset of broke, of the broke. They are afraid to do anything. It's a fire. Hey.
Eh, what if, what if, what if, what if they don't buy it? Eh? You know, what if people start hating on me? You know? Don't uh, I'm afraid I'm afraid, you know, is this bank trusted? Is this bank trustworthy? You know, because what if what if the bank closes? Because of your five hundred dollars. <laughs> Amen. Before you brought it, the bank has been living for hundred years. The day you bring it, because of your five hundred dollars, bank will close. Say me, I don't put money in bank. Oh. Hey! Me, ha ha! If you know banks, hey. <laughs> it's fear that runs them and ruins them. Therefore, taking no step because they are afraid of many things, including the unknown. Hallelujah. That's why broke folks are broke. Hey, but what if I go to. Ah, I don't know now. Hey. I don't know. I don't know anybody in Ivano. I don't know anybody in Ivano. Why should I go to Ivano? You know, what if something happened to me? I don't know. You forgot that when you were coming to Kiev, you didn't know anybody. When you were coming from Kiev, where you were coming, you didn't know anybody. Now you have come to know, bo- know somebody. And yet they tell you in Ivano, it's happening in Ivano. Go there, me Ivano. I hear that those people there. Hey. <laughs> 